thank you for tuning in to Bethel Christian Church's Wednesday Night Light. Because here at Bethel Christian Church, we are the light. We just want you to know, we're glad you decided to join us. We love you, and we appreciate you. If you could, please, don't forget to like, comment, and share this message. Because you never know, it could benefit someone you love just as much as you. Now enjoy the message, and don't forget to be the light. ceremony. Uh, she didn't know I was coming home and uh, <coughs> I wanted to surprise her. Um, but I really wanted to sit down and think about, you know, at this retirement, like, what can I say about this phenomenal woman? And, you know, all the things she instilled in me at a young age, uh, that reflects now uh, at the age of 45 uh, and throughout my career. And so um, what I had talked about was, uh, you know, leadership, because that's a big thing in the Army. You know, as a command sergeant major uh, in the Army, uh, I have two basic responsibilities, and is, you know, to accomplish the mission, whatever mission and objective that is given to me, right. and to look out and have the responsibilities of the health morale and welfare of soldiers and their family members. Mm -hmm. And whatever level you're at, that level can be, you know, whether you're a squad leader and that level is five people, or you're a command sergeant major like me, where the influence is extended out to 2,700 soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, and even at my next assignment, uh, which will be my last, because, you know, when I'm done with that, that'll put me at 30 years. And, Feel like I've served my country enough. Amen. That influence will now extend out to over ten thousand soldiers. Bless so, Jesus. So, you know, as a leader, you know, there are a lot of things, you know, that are required <coughs> uh, from us. And so, when you come in on the enlisted side, like I did, as a private, you start at the bottom, you know, and then you have to work your way up all the way to the top. And there are leaders that are in charge of you. Our basic responsibilities are also to groom the next leaders ahead of us. It's right, like Pastor right. said, you know, get them in basic training, add some discipline in their life, and then you pay it forward by instilling, you know, leadership qualities in them. Uh, so throughout my 25, I mean, my 27 years of service right now, you know, you get an evaluation. And so throughout my, all my evaluations, you know, they've been always it's always been said that you know you possess all the desirable traits attributes and competencies that's associated with being a professional army leader um, i've had good reviews 
you know, since the time I came in. But I credit that not to myself, but to the things this young lady right here instilled into me. Um, you know, my, my dad came along and at a later time in my life and instilled some things into me, but this ain't about him, it's about yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that. So in the Army, they say the definition of leadership is to the ability to influence people, soldiers, human beings, by adding purpose, direction, and motivation to accomplish any mission or any task or any goal or objective. And you say, okay, well, how do you do this? The end goal is to be able to instill these things into soldiers to be able to accomplish, which is the end our goal, which is what every service member came in for is to defend this nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Um, and so uh, the Army came up with a leadership requirements model. Uh, and it all encompasses around uh, the term be, know, and do. And so in the be and the know part, these are the attributes. So some of the things I'm gonna say, these attributes, the Army expects you to become masters at this, or these are things you have to come in with in order to feed down for you to be able to do the competencies. So I'll give you an example, uh, and the one I'm expand on later is called, uh, on the B part, is character. So in character, that possesses the Army values. Um, you have to have empathy for people, have empathy for soldiers. You have to believe in the warrior ethos. The warrior ethos is, um, I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat, and I will never leave a fallen comrade. Uh, you have to be disciplined. Uh, in being character. You have to show humility. Uh, and there are no more things that's outside of that that goes into that. Also, the next one is presence. Um, you have to have military bearing <clears throat> and professional bearing. The Army tip teaches us whether we own and off duty, we have to carry ourselves like we belong in the service because we're not only representing the United States Army, mm -hmm. we're representing our families also. Amen. Um, we have to be able to be physically fit. You know, I ain't the same size I was when I came in at the age of 18, but you know, still to this day, I'm just as physically fit as the rest of them. One of the big ones is you have to be confident, you know, as a leader. You know, you, I can't stand before you right now or stand in front of soldiers, especially during the time of battle, and have fear and show, show a display of fear. You know, it's a lot of pressure that be that 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 the leaders have. Mm -hmm. You know, we stand out in front because we have to be the weight bearer for all the soldiers right. that are below us. Yeah. You know, and then it's a struggle for some of the leaders because it's like, okay, all of them believe in me. Who who do I have to turn to mm -hmm. at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. You know, so a lot of leaders we we struggle with that because you know after we come out here and they see this strong leader mm -hmm. and they see all these medals. You know, when we go home, it's just us. Like, who do we turn to? Well, right. for me, I call mama all the time. Praise you know? God. <laughs> uh, and then the know, uh, which is important. Uh, you have to know how to be intellectual. That is a big thing. Um, and you have to ha be able to have mental agility. You got to be able to balance five, six, seven things at one time. While I'm doing this, I got to focus on that. And you can't break under pressure. Uh, you have to be able to use sound judgments to be able to make good judgment calls. Uh, one thing, Pastor, I know you can relate to, uh, you have to be innovative. It's like, okay, I got all these church members, they don't want to hear the same thing every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So what can I come up with uh, that can grab their ear? And you have to do that in the military a lot. You have to be innovative because they don't want to hear the same thing over and over again. You got to be able to have uh, interpersonal tact. You know, you got to have what, what we would call it. You got to be able to have swag, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it's, it's me. I'm 45 years old. You know, there's a lot of leaders now that, that came in when I did and they got out because of the generational gap between, you know, an 18 year old mm -hmm. and somebody my age. And so I get asked all the time, how are you able to relate to an 18 year old and people in your unit at 50 year old? Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to be able to connect. You got to be able to 
to get the game buy-in. You, you got to be able to, you know, it's like selling a car to them and then they got to believe in you right. and they got to be able to trust you. So, right. you know, uh, I always have this term that I say I lead by example. Don't go by my words, just watch my actions. Yeah. And so when soldiers see that, then they start to believe they can trust you. Mm -hmm. And when they trust you, it builds rapport. Mm -hmm. And when it builds rapport, you're able to make a cohesive team. Come on. Amen. All right? Amen. Um, and the last one is uh, for intellect. You know, you got to be able to show your expertise as a leader. Like through the years, every, all the knowledge you gain, your your job, uh, the, the experience you gain in your job and your com uh, combat, you have to be able to create a shared understanding and share those lifetime experiences with these soldiers. So and it's just not all about being a leader. I don't relate to them just as soldiers. I try to teach them to be better human beings because at the end of the day, when they come out this uniform and they go home, they somebody son, yes. they somebody yes. wife, somebody yeah. husband, you know, uh, they somebody sister and brother. And so a lot of soldiers these days, they don't struggle with being a soldier, but they struggle with yes. being on the human uh, dynamics uh, yes. side. And so you have to focus on that so they can be able to be phenomenal soldiers, yes. to be able to accomplish the mission that, that is set forth. That's good. And then uh, the competencies are, which the, now that these things I've talked about, once you've learned these things and these things are instilled in you through practice and through time, this is what the Army says they want you to do as a leader. They want you to be able to lead, number one. Yes, sir. Uh, they want you to lead others. They want yes. you to build trust. They want you to extend your influence beyond your chain of command. Right. So what that means is, uh, just like Pastor, like, your influence ain't just with Bethel. You, have a, you can extend your influence across this world. You know, uh, so uh, along with me, my goal is not to just reach soldiers that are under my leadership, but to reach soldiers outside of my leadership yes. because mentorship is free. Yes. It don't cost nothing yes. but your time, yes. you know? Uh, I have to, like I said, I have to lead by example. And the other one, the big one is that I talked about how you relate to an 18 year old and be able to relate to somebody my age, you have to be able to communicate with them. Yes, sir. Um, one of the one of the uh, tools that I use to communicate with soldiers is, you know, I say, hey, don't even look at me as a sergeant major. I want you to think of me as Yancey Hampton, you know, and I share some of my mishap with them uh, that I've encountered during life to help get where I'm at today. And I share that with them so they can see, oh, you know what, sergeant major, he human too. He done messed up before in the past, you know, but they look at it like, he didn't have to share that with us. Cause a lot of leaders, man, uh, Pastor Mom, they they forget where they came from. Yes. You know, they get Amen. this thing on here, yeah. and now you can't tell. They, they see these strikes and all these awards. It's like you can't tell them nothing now. Right. You know, but uh, soldiers see that, you know, and when they get to see you human just like them, they respect you yes, for sir. being Yancey J. Hampton. Yes, and then they automatically got us respect for Command Sergeant Major Hampton. Yes. A big thing they want us to do uh, also is develop. You know, you have to prepare yourself also. So also, as I'm developing soldiers, I have to develop myself. Right. You know, when I came in, education wasn't all the Army cared about is, hey, become a master at your job. You know, they ain't teach us nothing about going out here and getting your civilian ed education. You know, I didn't get my bachelor's degree to the age of 40, but you know, I got it. But now I instill this in soldiers, hey man, as you developing, other leaders, you need to develop yourself also. Absolutely. Go to school, go get your education. Absolutely. Also, uh, we have to create a, a positive work environment. Uh, don't nobody want to come to work if I'm grumpy. You know, <laughs> me as a higher up that I am, I set the tone. The way I come in the building, if they see a smile on my face, it's going to be a good day. Yes. If I come in there and smile on my face, it's like, oh man, what's wrong with Sergeant Major? We must have did something wrong. Um, but the way you come in and create a positive work environment, you got to be able to uh, uh, be able to relate uh, high, high. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to be able to relate lateral with mm -hmm, your peers, and then mm -hmm. you got to be able to relate with your subordinates. You mm -hmm. got to make them feel like they are a part of the team. Yes. yes. Uh, and you have to be a steward of the profession. You know. Uh, I tell mom all the time, I live, sleep, and breathe Army. It's just because I've been in here since I was 18 years old. Yeah. And I love it, and I love it a lot. And the last one, they want you to get results, you know, and that's called achievement. Absolutely. Uh, you know, whatever you do, 
all of this, it don't matter what happens, the Army just wants you, a leader, to get the results. Whether I go out here, been in six combat tours, and I haven't lost one soldier to combat, uh, that is called getting uh, results. And if I can go out here and, and change people's lives, that is called getting results. Yes. You know, if I go out here and shoot 40 out of 40 on my M16, my 249, and teach soldiers how to do that and have a 100% qualification rate, that is getting results. Yes. And, able, and even if I can change somebody's life as a human being, yeah. that is getting uh, yeah, results. Yeah. But so those are, that is the model that the Army uses. But I want to focus on, I want to take you back to the one that throughout my years and me and other SAR majors and other leaders talk, the one that is the most important on any evaluation form, and that is the one that's called character. You know, sometimes the character, you know, it's hard to teach people to have empathy uh, for other people. You know, I can relate to somebody that got a DUI. I got one a long time ago when I was 19 years old. I actually got it in front of the police station. You know, so when a soldier come in and have a DUI, you know, even after I spoke out in formation and said, hey, you can't drink and drive, I can still sit down with the soldiers and say, hey, man, I empathize with what you're going through because I used to be in your shoes, mm -hmm. you know. And even though you're going to get punished for it like I did, even and it's going to break you down, but it's my job to build you back up at the yes, same time yes. and get you back out there in the force. Mm -hmm. uh, humility, you know, uh, I've never thought with all the accomplishment that I had that I was better than any other soldiers in my formation. Like I said, I never forgot where I came from. Every time I stand in that formation, I always look at the Lord's ranking soldier, and I said, that used to be me, and I try to remember that, and I try to think of ways where I can make it better for them. Um, discipline, sometimes it's hard, and the discipline can go with anything. Uh, Living, living your life for God. Absolutely. You know, the devil gonna come in and try to throw things away, yeah. and you know, and you gotta stay on that straight path that God have you on, uh, that God puts you on. And sometimes, you know, we have we struggle with going left and right, you know. But that's why, you know, God put people in our lives like my mother and my father. That you know, when I feel like I'm going that way, you know, she get me back. She get me back on there. And plus, she instilled that in me at a young age, the discipline, which I'll talk about with them oak tree switches out there. <laughs> when I was young. The Lord. Um, but the real big one that we struggle against, and you know, I probably wouldn't say this to, uh, you know, in front of a formation to a lot of soldiers, you know, it's our ethical and moral beliefs. Oh. And it's taking oh. how you were raised, and, and there's gonna be challenges that come up for soldiers now that the Army say we have to do or we have to accept. You know, transgenders, you know, in the military, you know, homosexuality, you know, and you asking the soldiers to, hey, to accept this. Well, I remember, I'm like, hold on, I remember teachers when I was coming up, that this ain't right in the, in the sight of God, yeah. you know? But we have to adjust to these things um, in order to be a part of this organization. You know, there's gonna be a time, you know, where the army's gonna ask me, you know, to do something against, you know, my upbringing and something against my belief and something against, you know, my faith in God. And, you know, when it gets to that point, then I have to make a decision. But these are things we we struggle with as leaders and, yes, you, and you have to try to find that medium ground, yes, you know, with these soldiers coming in because mm -hmm. some of them, you know, even, you know, we have this thing called equal opportunity where you treat all soldiers fair, regardless of gender, mm -hmm. race, belief, uh, uh, sexual orientation. You gotta all treat them like they're one. And you know, sometimes we struggle with that. I remember back in a uh, while back when George Floyd uh, uh, got killed, and I saw my soldiers started uh, segregating themselves. Yes. Uh, all the white soldiers were starting to hang with right. them, and all the black soldiers were right. starting to hang, mm -hmm. and then the Hispanics were over here, and then you just had that group that just didn't know where they belonged. And uh, I said, how do I get this unit back together as a leader? So I had to go and bring them together and teach like, hey, you, we all different shades, but if you cut this open right here, we all bleed the same color. Yeah. So we all family at the end of the day fighting the same war, and I was able to get those soldiers back together. So. But also, the biggest thing I want to uh, talk to you about, and this, this is coming towards the end, is uh, the Army values. And the Army values equals leadership. 
And leadership is broken down into an acronym, uh, where it's L, D, R, S, H, I, and the P. And so when I talked about leadership, the acronym, the L stands for loyalty. And I, it is, you know, I will be loyal to those whom I serve, my seniors, my peers, and my subordinates alike. And I used to tell this to my mom, hey, I'm loyal to the army. You know, but mom said, no, nah, son, first of all, you loyal to God. Amen. You know, and you loyal to God, that is the first person God wants us to be loyal to him. And then after that, everything mm -hmm. else you can be yes. loyal to. Uh, we also talked about the D, it stands for duty. And it's fulfilling, you know, your obligation. Right. Anything you set forth to do, you make sure you finish it. And my mom, I watched that at a young age. She said, son, whatever you start, you make sure you finish it. Yes, sir. Uh, the R stands for respect. You know, it's treat people like you wanted to be treated. Amen. You know, the Army talks about treating all people with dignity and respect. And, you know, and that's something uh, this beautiful lady right here instilled in me at a young age because, you know, I grew up in an era where I didn't, it didn't matter if you were older than me. I said, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, and mm -hmm. yes, sir, and, and no, sir. Um, but it's treating people like how you wanted to be treated. Yes. Um, another big one is uh, the S, selfless service. So when I hear selfless service, I mean, that is basically my leadership style. I'm here to serve the people of the United States and I serve my community. Mm -hmm. But also when I hear selfless service, I think about servant leadership, and, you know, and, and servant leadership is big with me because that's all I watched this woman here do uh, coming up. I mean, she out there in the community, she out there, you know, serving other people at a job. You know, she's not, she's selfless. She's not only thinking about herself, she's thinking about other people at the same time right um honor you know have honor in anything you do you know i am proud to be the lord's young son you know i tell you you know and i'm i am proud to be from archer florida i tell people all the time i'm not from Gainesville. i'm from little archer <laughs> i'm proud to be you know from where i'm from i'm proud to have joined the army you know because the army it, it you know regardless some people may think it's bad but it has changed my life um, for the for the Absolutely. for the best part, you know, integrity is the next one. Just do what's right when nobody else is That's looking. You it. know, do the right thing when yeah. nobody else is looking. You know, right um, and sometimes I used to struggle with integrity. I remember one time when I was in elementary school, I think I stole a pair of earrings, and then mm -hmm. I get uh, from the lunch lady, and I gave it to my mama as a gift. And, they, and I lied about it. Next thing you know, I had one of them oak trees uh, <laughs> going on my backside. But, you know, it, it, it wasn't about the, you know, the whooping she put on my backside. She just wanted me to learn how to tell the truth and always yeah. say the truth. Um, personal courage, you know, not being afraid, not uh, being able to face any fears you have, you know. Just like coming up here, I'm like, I'm nervous right now. I don't even know what to say. But once I get up here and start talking, then yes, all sir. the fear goes away. Yes. But like I said, you know, having that personal courage in order to me, in order for me to tell a soldier to pick up your rifle and go out to Iraq and Afghanistan and to serve your country, I have to be able to have no fear in doing that myself. Amen. Right? Yes. Um, and so that right there, that leadership, you know, broken down with everything I said. That is what the Army says that I have to be uh, in order to be in the position that I am. And right now, I'm at to the point where I just, I'm at a level where I, I lead leaders now. And so I have to be able to communicate with leaders so they can instill the things that my influence and the vision that I have for organization down to the lowest soldier. And, you know, and at this next level, I ask God, I say, how am I going to be able to reach 10,000 soldiers and keep them alive. And I, I would tell you, the hardest thing for a leader is when you lose somebody. Yes, I sir. never lost somebody in combat. I've been on six deployment abroad. Even with all the injuries we received, I brought everybody home. But the challenge is not going to war, you know, with these soldiers. The challenge is when you have them back here in peacetime. Yeah. There's so much stuff going in the yeah. world today. Yeah. Yeah. Versus than what I went through when yeah. I was younger. Yeah. They got all kind of stuff out here. Yeah. And, these, and a lot of these soldiers are not mentally tough. Yeah. And, you know, I really broke down. I lost one soldier, two soldiers too. Uh, drunk driving, but the one that broke me down as the most is one soldier. Her name is Michelle Galaza, and you know I, I 
I fell in love with this young lady like she was my daughter. From I raised her from the age of 18. She followed me to Korea. She followed me to Fort Bliss. And she always used to follow behind me with a book writing everything down. And, you know, and I noticed when we were in, out from combat in Kuwait, you know, she suffered from depression, you know, from not having a dad. And she suffered from, you know, just being a loner. But she found that dad in, in, in me. And yeah. I was able to raise her up. And, you know, and once we, you know, we kind of broke apart and she asked me for permission, you know, she wanted my blessing for her to get married. And I told her, of course, and I walked her down the aisle. You know, I kind of separated myself so she could focus on the family life. And then when I made the rank of command sergeant major, I hadn't talked to her in about two weeks, and she called me to tell me congratulations. And at the time, I heard something in her voice, and I said, hey, are you okay? And she was like, yeah, I am, Pops. She's like, let's meet up Monday, uh, and we can sit down and talk about, uh, you know, everything since we haven't talked in a month. Well, that month, that Saturday when I woke up, I had like 30 minutes call. You know, she put a gun in her head, and she killed herself. And she left a note in there inside that note it is, uh, uh, you know, apologizing to me for, you know, letting me down and stuff like that. And I struggled with that as a leader for a long time because I put that blame, you know, on me. I was like, Lord, I wonder, I wonder if I told her not to get married, would she still, you know, be here today? And I wonder if I didn't give her that space, you know, would she still be here? But I kind of used that loss. And it, and it put a fire into me to focus on the human side of, of soldiers right. and, right. and, and to be Thank able to right. and try to encourage them, you know, whether they make a career out of the Army or not, I just want to make, I just want to see them be better human beings on this yes. earth. Yes. And, and that has been my goal for like the last 10 years. And as I get ready to do my last assignment, that's going to continue to be my goal. And a lot of people ask me, hey, why haven't you retired past 20? I mean, you got the 20, why are you still keep going? Well, I have this desire and commitment to serve the people, uh, Pastor, and uh, I feel that God placed me here because I'm changing lives. Yes, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm making them better soldiers, but yes, I see the impact that I have on, you know, all souls, not just only, you know, soldiers, African-American soldiers, because when they see me, I, I instantly become a role model or a leader to them, a leader to them because there's not many of us in this right. in this organization, right. yes. and I, I feel like you know when I when it's time for me to hang it up, I can look back over my career, my 30 years, and say, hey, I gave it all, you know, gave it all I got. So, uh, but mom, thank you uh, for instilling these uh, competencies and attributes in me at a young age. Sometimes I didn't understand, you know, why you were doing the same, you know, why you were doing some of the things you did. You know, you did your best coming along uh, for the first. I would say 16 years of your life when it was just me until Pops came along, and, you know, and he instilled that discipline into my, to myself and my brother also. And I just want to say thank you for Amen. your service that you've Amen. done yes. to the community and through, throughout a lot of your county. So join me in giving my mom a round of applause. Thank you so much again for your continued service and faithfulness. If this ministry is a blessing to you, please continue to like, follow, and most of all, share. You are the Miracle on 143rd Street. Be a blessing.